Welcome to Oral Sessions. Uh, I'll be your host this evening. My name is John Moxton, joined by my friend Emilio here on Oral Sessions. Yeah. Late night. Uh, see, that was my Ryback voice that Renee hates. But it's not really so much a Ryback voice as it is kind of an amalgamation of Ryback and, uh, you know, that Offspring record where they do intermission? Yeah. It's yeah. on the Ombre. And it's like, uh, intermission. Yeah. See, I also thought like, it was. When I say oral then, sessions, I have to do it in the voice. You know, now you here I am it. hosting this show. On my day, I'm about to have a kid. I just flew from Jacksonville, competed in a crazy man i can't even barely walk today i don't know how many of those i got left in me uh on pay-per-view in front of five thousand people and then i fly all the way home i got stuff to do i got bills to pay i got you know i'm still finishing editing a book i'm dealing with artwork i'm talking to people on the phone and then i gotta come in here and do her job too i'm, uh, well, I'm sorry i am really really carrying the workload around here but she's carrying like 35 pounds of uh goo in her belly and a human so it, it all evens out in the end but right. uh, here i am hosting a show completely unqualified for this and this is going to be a total show we're going to just going to see what happens i i I've understand we've sourced some questions from the audience uh the the loyal oral sessions audience that loves oral sessions yeah uh, here on the volume you know so i'm a professional I get in here, I get the job done. I'm like an entertainment Navy SEAL. You can stick me in anywhere. Give me, the, give me that Kelly Ripa f gig. If Renee doesn't want to take it. I'm clearly in here doing all the work. I'll step right, right in, in Kelly Ripa's shoes. Right. So what would you do differently as opposed to Kelly Ripa if you were to host it? Like, how would we change live with Kelly and Ryan and just make it John and Ryan? Oh, I mean, it'd be a lot of, a lot of morning drinking, a uh, lot of swearing. You know, it it would really tank the whole thing or change television completely. I, I don't know, but give give me a call. You know, no, I, I, I want her, I want her to get the Kelly Ripa gig because I want to just be a stay at home dad and go do indie shows on the weekends. So I want her to get like that giant fat paycheck, so I don't have to work because I did all my work on the front end. You see, right? So I just want now. I just want her to make all the money, and I just want to relax. See what I'm saying? I mean, that's I've really I've really beat the system. No, I mean, that's literally living the dream, bro. Like, I want to be a stay-at-home house husband in the worst possible way. Like, I, I'm a big This Is Us guy, so I'm watching that, and Toby's over here flipping out about needing to go back to work for his mental sanity. What's I don't your problem, mind. dude? What's your problem? We're just watching that. Stay at home. Take care of the kid. You had that's the kid. Me. You're responsible for the kid, okay? It's Somebody's like got to take care of it. She wants to go to work. What are you complaining about? Right. And you know what? <laughs> Kevin. I'm sick of Kevin. I'm sick of his <laughs> attitude. No, he's a. B I'm sick of his attitude. He's always got to create problems. Everything he's got to make everything dramatic. You know, I'm glad that girl dumped him. I'm glad she didn't marry him. He didn't I deserve her. Realized it though. They weren't in love. No, he was not in love with that woman. No, his. I'm glad she saw this. It. His ex girlfriend. Kevin. He's just he. He's one of those pleasers. I think he's one of those settlers that just settles for happiness because he feels nobody else is gonna love him. There's like nothing. I, he, He's Kevin is nothing but problems. He's nothing but problems. Kevin. Why is everything got to be so dramatic? Well, some people just make it drip. He makes it drip. Well, like, oh, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in, yeah, like, come on. You know. you know, we all like Vicodin. Quit being a little yeah. b about it. All right. 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 I say enjoy a little Vicodin. Take a little sip of some whiskey. Have a good time. See where it goes. Hey, that's just my opinion. Okay. But, so um, before we get into these questions here, you know, I feel like now I have now I'm at work. Now I'm now I'm you know, now I'm working. I gotta so I'm gonna give everybody a lesson here how to get fired up, okay, before we start taking these questions. This right here. Tiger bomb. Yes. Even better if you get the red stuff. I basically live by this. Only on show days. Even though sometimes I want to do it on an off day when I can't walk or I feel like crap, which is basically every day. Save it for the show day because the smell of Tiger Ball makes me know that it's go time, right? So that's what we're going to do right now. Here's a little Just, trick. Here's a little trick a wrestler called Bull Payne told me before my second or third ever tag match. 
very intimidating guy, kind of a biker looking kind of thing. Very successful veteran of the industry. He had a baseball bat and a leather jacket and the spikes and the whole thing. And he goes, stick this up your nose. I don't want you getting blown up. And so I did. And I went, <laughs> ah, and now I have a, uh, a superstition to where if I don't have Tiger Bomb before a match, I fear that everything will just go to absolute hell. So in the interest of, uh, you know, props and visual aids here on the volume, we're going to do a little bit of Tiger Bomb. So I'll stick over on your camera. Get in that. Oh, yeah. I should have sent you some. Here we go. This is a pro tip. There we go. If you're going to do the whole neck and everything, you need uh, rubber gloves. You know, you can get them at Walgreens. Okay. Drainer's room. Because you don't want to get Tiger Bomb in your eye right before you go out. More importantly, you don't want to get Tiger Bomb in your urethra, which happens. And that is, you know, there's nothing you can do. You just have to wait it out until the, there we go. Feel that burn. Let's take some questions. Let's go. All, All right. right. So we use the hashtag Ask Mox. Now you can ask Mox anything. You can ask Mox about relationships, groceries, taxes, professional wrestling, whatever. I'm very wise. You are. You you are what we call Dr. Feelgood on, on the Valentine's Day episode. And you answered many a question about romance. So this one comes from that guy, Travis, and he goes, Hey, John, freshly engaged, and I'm wondering the very obvious. What would you say has been the key to your successful relationship? I know it takes so much just looking for your number one bit of advice. Oh, I hate. I knew I was going to have to do this, and I hate to do it. Well, I don't want to get here's the situation I'm in. This is how, you know, I have a book that's available for pre-order now, right? Mm -hmm. That you can go on Amazon and buy chock full of life advice on matters such as these. And I don't want to give away the farm for free here on the volume because, you know, I'm trying to sell some books, you know, I'd like to sell a few, you know, what? I don't really care if I, you know, whatever. So I'm going to have to give away, I'm going to give a little bit, but I can't give away the whole farm. Okay. So this is the first time of like a dozen more times throughout this podcast where I'm going to be like, well, if you want the full story on this, you can read my upcoming uh, novel. I was I didn't know what to call it because I wouldn't call it an autobiography, really. I don't even know what I would call it. It's trash. It's a terrible book, but it's going to sell a bunch of copies. Uh, no, I'm Make just kidding. that money, brother. Uh it, it's you can read the whole, you can read the whole story on uh you know in this in the upcoming book you can buy it for pre order on Amazon right now I'm gonna say that like twelve more times so to answer your question if I had to if I had to give you one what is the key I'll give you two now I'm giving them I'm not gonna give away the whole farm but I give you you're two. being kind happy wife happy life if they're happy you're happy even if the stupidest shit in the world is what makes them happy. If they're complete, like whatever logic they have that they need to make right in their brain, just fix that. And then your life will be happy. Keep them happy. That is your job. Like, you know, when you're uh, play football, you're on the defensive line, your job is to stop the gap. I'm covering a gap on this play. We're in a three, four or we're in a four, three or whatever it is. I'm the defensive tackle. My job, you know, the football coach says, do your job. I plug the a gap. Your job is to keep your significant other happy and everything else will just fall into place. So stay focused on your job. Most importantly, sex, lots and lots and lots of sex. Okay. You can't have too much sex. No. When you're at work, if, you know, you have a boss come up to you and been like, hey, you know, you're, you're already done with your work. Grab a broom because there's always cleaning to be done. If you don't know what you should be doing right at that moment, you should be having sex. <laughs> there's always sex to be had. It keeps everything, you know what I mean? You don't want to split your differential and tip this way and that way, you know? Like, you got to keep it... uh lubed up below the belt kind of thing you know that whole like scene from uh wolf of wall street with matthew mcconaughey where he off twice a day that except you don't have to off twice a day because you have a significant other and you have to keep them happy too so keep everybody's differential right in the middle do you see what i'm saying lots and lots of sex 
what about some tiger bomb up the nose before sex? No, so game no, 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 no. Two different things. Two separate two worlds. Things. Tiger okay. bombs for wrestling. No. You know okay. what I said about the urethra? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't, don't get it anywhere near. All right. So, Travis, you, you know it right there. So, happy life, happy life, and tons of sex. You got Good all kinds of body you. parts, orifices, nipples flying about. You don't need any tiger bomb anywhere near that situation. I mean, some people have different types of kink locks, but that's neither here nor there. All right, so this one goes to Lady Regan, and she wants to know, if your daughter wanted to get involved in the wrestling business right out of high school, would you? what would you tell her? If she was really passionate about it, then, uh, then yeah, go for it. If, uh, if not, if it was just like a playing around thing, then go play around with it. Sometimes you get into some stuff and you play around. Sometimes you're gung ho about something. I was gung ho about this. All I've ever wanted to do. This was not a playing around, having fun. This is not, let's try this out, see if it works out. Like, you know, some people come into wrestling with that attitude and then go on to make millions of dollars. Then they get really good at it, you know? Uh, so it can work, but you know, me, I was, this is, this was my life. This was it. There was no other anything, you know? So I, I would assess where her mindset was. And if it was like, Hey, you know, get in there and uh, take a bump, see how that feels. And then, you know, maybe everything changes. So, yeah, I mean, but if she wanted to go be a circus performer or, a math teacher or join the Peace Corps or be a pro wrestler or a hockey player or ringette. We don't have that here, no. but Renee might be able to teach her to play ringette. Uh, whatever she wanted to do. I say, do whatever you want to do. And I, I would support literally anything. As long as you're not hurting anybody or yourself, then, you know, whatever you want to do, man, but, you know, whatever so she came to you and said, dad, I've been watching a ton of your old deathmatch stuff. I'm ready to go. I want to go through barbed wire. I want to have the spooky light tube dust busted all over my head. How are you reacting to that? I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say because this person isn't in existence yet. So I don't know this person. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, my initial instinct is like, okay, maybe not. You know, you don't need to do that. You know, I mean, I can get, you know, also you can read my new best-selling book that you can pre-order on Amazon right now. I, I can pretty, pretty much give you every what not to do advice as far as, you know, things like this. Uh, so I would give her a bunch of what not to do's, but I mean, in theory, if, if this girl was just like, if, if she was that much like me and was that crazy, then like I would, I would, cause if I just said, no, don't do it. See what happens is, I mean, I don't have a kid, so I can't really dish out parenting advice, but I think it's a pretty common knowledge and, and uh, you know, basic understanding of people when you tell them not to do something, that's when they go do it. So if, if I was like, oh, she wants to do this wrestling and it's going to be dangerous and I'm scared for her, I wouldn't tell her no. Because if you say, don't date John Moxley, that teenage girl is going to run right out the door and go and all of a sudden, you know, we got some slits somewhere in the back of a car and, you know, behind the drive in, you know what I mean? So I would not dis I would guide her. I would say, if you're going to do something, here's how we do it safely. Cause I'd much rather her, uh, you know, like how parents say like, Oh, I'd rather them drink in the house if we're home than they're out at some party. We don't know what's going on. I'd rather supervise it. So if she wanted to go, if she ever wanted to get into wrestling in theory, I would rather, guide it and make sure it was done correctly and safely and right and for the right reasons and so forth like that but i don't know this person yet there's she's still in my wife's belly i mean you will but, you know for, so I, I don't know who who she is i mean so, like, it's gonna happen i mean the first year of their life they literally just lay there so they won't have a personality but you know you will shape and the whole nature nurture thing will come into mind so either they're born with it or or, or it's made over time yeah, and dude, i don't know anything that. about all this. i've got like a stacks of parenting books i'm like i'm not even reading that because it's too it's too it's too much i'm looking at this like uh i'm just gonna call this in the ring everybody tells me that uh you know it all is natural and it's it, your instincts take over and i'm like okay well then if that's the case i'm just gonna wing it because to me and like I had an opportunity to like hold somebody's baby like a few weeks back. And I said, no, thank you. 
No offense. Beautiful baby. But here's why. I don't climb the ladder during the day of a pay-per-view. Right. Before there's a crowd, before there's a, I don't get up on top of the cage. You know, if they make me for like a camera rehearsal, I'm always like, oh, don't make me do that. Cause it's when you get up there with no adrenaline, it seems very scary. It seems 10 times higher during the day. I'm going to do it once on live TV with adrenaline pumping. I'm just going to pop, 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 go up there and jump off. I'm not even going to think about it. So I'll hold the baby for the first time. I've never held the baby. I'll do that for the first time when it's real, when it's life and death and it's my baby. And then let all the adrenaline and nature and millions of years of uh, uh, evolution take over. And then I'll be good. I can't read this. I mean, our parents did. Book. Our parents, our parents He's going to let do. evolution take over, you know? All our ancestors built this body and our instincts and our minds to do this. I got to know somewhere deep down in my brain how to do this. I mean, Mox, my dad was literally smoking a cigarette the day I was like born. So it's like it was a cigarette hanging out of his mouth when he was like, you know, when my mother was in de in the delivery room. So it's like it, it's just a natural thing. It's like you you click into it. Um, but what about changing a diaper? So you've never even done that before. What, when would I have ever done that? I, I don't know. Uh, nieces, nephews. I, I don't know. And no. they said, I, don't well, know. I mean, yeah, it's good. But no, no, I've never. No, no. My sister just had a baby, but that was like a year ago. Oh, the first no. baby I've ever really seen up close. I was like, ah, it's like a little human. Right. But, you know, it totally freaked me out. Okay. But uh, I don't know. You'll anyway. figure it out. I have faith in you. I think you'll call an audible. I, and I, I, I like worried. That's my whole point. No, we're just going to wing it, babe. We'll see just wing it. That's it. That's it. So this one comes from Sophie D. Loves BSB. Um, what are your top three karaoke songs? That's a great question. Good one. So you have to see, I, I can't actually sing. My voice is all messed up. I can't do anything. And, you know, I can't hit high notes. There's songs that I wish I could sing that I just can't sing. Yeah. I just, I, my, my, there's sounds that my, that of a higher pitch notes, even just words in the ways that I just literally, my voice can't make that sound. So I have to choose my karaoke songs very carefully. Uh, so you stick with like the low, the low stuff, right? Billy Idol, White Wedding mm. is a go-to for me. Hey, little sister, what have you done? See, I can handle that, right? That's good. Bloodhound Gang, uh, Firewater Burn. I can handle that. It's a lot of words. It's almost like rapping, but I got it all memorized. So I can, I can hit it when they got that song. But it's not a lot of up and down. It's just very like, you know, uh, Sweet Caroline is always a crowd favorite. Crowd loves that one. Uh, I'd say those are the top three. You know, I'm getting a lot of Neil, Neil, Neil Diamond vibes from you in terms of like speech and tone. So you I, went on a, uh, I went on a Pearl Jam black phase for a while when we were, we were at uh, Dino's karaoke in Vegas and I went on some Pearl Jam Black and I think that kind of pulled it off a little bit to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, you know, Eddie Vedder has a real guttural voice and so do you in, in terms of like pitch and tone. So I can see you doing that, yeah. but I, I can't see you doing Cemetery Gates, but I can see you doing later Pantera. I, I don't think Pantera uh, is good karaoke music. I love Pantera to death. Right. For listening to them a million scenarios, but I don't know if it's for the whole room. You know what I mean? True. True. I don't know if it's for the whole room. You know what I could see you doing that I think you would crush it just because you 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 ooze sex appeal, um, according to the the internet's. No, you got I, that one right. I could. Well, besides that, I could oh. see you do. Let's get it on. What is that like? Uh, like R? It's like an old school R and B. Like old school Marvin Gaye R and B song. You know what? I should try that next time we go to care. You know, COVID's ending. People getting vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. As f I could go right out to a bar right now and go karaoke. Next time I go, I can't now because I'm about to have this kid and stuff. But right. next time, cool. Maybe like on the next Jericho cruise, we'll hit some. Uh, let's get it on. Yeah, oh, I, I like your style, Mox. All right, so this one comes from Brent Smith, oh nine eight eight. Mox, what is a good vacation idea for a third anniversary? Interesting. I mean, it totally depends on your personalities and what y'all are into and everything. I mean, 
some people going to WrestleMania is the greatest vacation ever for them. They go to all the shows all week and so forth. Some people are into hiking. Some people are into bopping around cities and sightseeing and so forth. So it uh, all depends on the personality. I will say this as far as vacations go. So I'm not a big vacation person per se, because I've lived my entire life traveling. I've been fortunate enough to uh, been paid to see the world on another man's dime, basically. Uh, and I've got to have my wife there with me for a lot of that. So I've been to all these places and seen all these things, uh, but like for work. So like kind of my life is a vacation because I love my job too. So I'm very lucky. So I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying I usually don't need like, oh, I need like my vacation is coming home. Home is the novelty. At least it always was until 2020 when everything went all weird and we quarantining and stuff. But up to that, getting two days where you just get to sit at home and be in your own space and actually be at home, that was the vacation. So I'm rambling here, but my point is we went on one actual vacation once. It was to Hawaii. It's the first time I ever missed the TV in like years. I had to put in for it like months in advance, right? So I'm miss this TV. We're going to go to Hawaii for like six days. It was like going to be like our honeymoon, even though it was like months after we actually got married. Uh, so we booked the hotel and we do the thing. And we go there or whatever. I was hurt during that too and was like in immense pain and I couldn't sleep. So that kind of ruined it too. But also the, uh, it was like we had planned so much stuff and there was so much stuff to do and there were so many options that it wasn't like relaxing. It felt like an event. Like it felt like I was like, I got to get up and I got to go see this and this and this before that closes or whatever. So it was almost not like it was work, but it was like, I wouldn't call it relaxing. Uh, when I, that same injury, actually, when I actually, I had to, ended up having to go to Birmingham, Alabama to rehab. Right. So we can't fly with the dog. Cause he's, he's a fat little he can't go. He can't fly commercial. Uh, so we got, but we got to bring him. So we got to drive. So I have to drive my truck across the country to Birmingham with the dog. And it was, took like three days, but we're in no rush. So we drove like 10 hours a day, nine, 10, maybe 12 hours, depending on, you know, over three I'm days. Good. I'm good. Very, rela very relaxing time through New Mexico, through West Texas, into the mid East or no, excuse me, into the Midwest, it's a bit like the beautiful, uh, pinks and oranges of New Mexico and so forth. And like, like we stayed in like Albuquerque the first night and then like somewhere in Texas the second night, like we were in no rush. And all we did was just sit in the car and look out the window, listen to like podcasts or music and talk and just look at the scenery going by and three days of all that driving. You think that would be like a giant pain in the ass. I've never been more relaxed. By the time we got to Birmingham, I was like, that was so relaxing. Just like chill in the car, watch some scenery go by and talk to your best friend or your significant other or whatever. So I would say if your significant other is your best friend, it doesn't matter where you go. You're going to be having a good time. And uh, so that, that's the important part, you know? But for me, I guess my whole point of all this is like going on an actual vacation at like a resort or whatever. I didn't find that relaxing. You might not be looking for relaxation. You might be out there looking for like a wild time. That's cool too. But I found the most relaxing vacation I ever had wasn't even a vacation. It was just driving across the country with no real schedule, no real plan. Just then eh, we'll just drive till we don't feel like driving anymore and then we'll get a hotel and then, you know, just kind of, that's some relaxing <laughs> to see this beautiful land of ours with these highways that we have. Right. Right. Get, see, get, me, get in the car and drive, man. Just get in a right. car and just see what's up. You know, but see to me, the most daunting task would be sitting in a car for three days doing the driving when I can just, you know, be on a plane and be there, but to see what you're saying, like, you know, sunsets and, and yeah, we're not, on, we're not on a schedule. We'll get there when we get right. there. Like, you right. know, just, just hang out in the car, just chill, man. Just drive, this, you know? Well, this is going to happen, though. You, you might have to go to Disneyland if the child is going to be into Disney. Oh, so. I really, I really hope that that's, they don't want to do that. 
I don't like I don't like amusement parks. I don't like big crowds. I don't like standing in lines. Like, and it's not. I hate it. I hate it. Like, di- like Disneyland would be like my nightmare. I didn't. But if I gotta do it, I gotta do it. All right. This one comes from Danhausen AD. What type of jeans are the best to work out in and sleep in? Is there one for both? Page jeans. I believe P A G E. Very like they're not specifically designed for uh athletics. Like there's some kind of brand called like barbell jeans, I think. But I actually didn't think they fit me very well. Like the uh page jeans, you can just get them at the mall, like JCPenney or whatever, somewhere. And they're like um uh, they got a bunch of different cuts. But they're light, they're stretchy, they're loose, they look good, they fit good. They're good for real life. They're good. You could run a marathon in them. You could wrestle a match in them. You could sleep in them. You can walk around in them. They're all purpose. And they're comfortable as all hell from the minute you put them on. They're like light and loose. I mean, they're not designed for wrestling or anything like that. They're just regular jeans. But the way they, whatever they're made out of, however they do it, that's the, that's the brand. You know, I've got that question a lot over the years. So let's put that to bed right now. The page, well, you know what it page is? You're, jeans are the, are the you're synonymous with jeans, and I hope this is in your book that's come out and it's available for pre-order right now. That you you get into why John Moxley sleeps in jeans, works out in jeans. I don't always sleep. Look, I'm wearing sweatpants right now. See, I'm wearing sweatpants and dad shoes. What's the dad shoe? What, 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 what's the... Look at those suckers. Oh, those are very dad esque. Okay. Oh yeah, they're ugly as all hell. Okay. I'm ready. I might have to get you a pair of Jordans. No, I don't, I don't, I don't spend much money on shoes because I, I, I like, I just want them to fit good. That, that's all I need. Like, you know. Well, it, you, you see, and like I got have... a big goofy foot. I wear 14 wide. Like, mm. so like I wore Payless shoes forever just because they had, they always have 14s and they had comfortable somewhat goofy looking shoes but like i'm not trying to be here all day trying to i just want to i just want a comfortable pair of shoes man i'm just trying to walk i just want to walk that's so why, the dad that's shoes why i had there. shoes or a run you know okay. but you know uh, so that's even more important i need to be comfortable i like to run i'm a big running guy so i need comfortable shoes i'm about function over fashion as far as shoes go you mostly <laughs> shoes i wear are uh like I wear Under Armour tactical boots. I have like a pair to work in, a pair for real life, and I'll kind of alternate them. And I, I always like just it seems like every few weeks I just Amazon a new one just to make sure I still got a fresh pair coming in. And uh, that's why wrestling because we started wearing combat boots with the shield, and uh, we tried different brands that were lighter because we started out in like these steel toe motherfuckers and we're breaking people's faces open. So we found some lighter, more. Uh, nimble athletic tactical boots but they go with everything you, i've worn them with a suit you can wear them to the gym you can wear them anywhere with anything and that's that's what i wrestle in so they're just all-purpose shoes they're comfortable light they fit they look good they go with anything you could i could wear them to the oscars with a tuxedo nobody would notice like they just they fit you're a tactical man. You're a simple man. You're a man that just likes to have what he has. He whirls out of bed. There's his shoes right there. He puts them on. He might go rock climbing. He might go running. He might kick somebody in the face. The shoe has an all-purpose shoe. What about a croc, though, Mox? Would you wear a croc for comfort around the house? Taking out the garbage, walking the dog? Like, a- Are you a croc? A- absolutely not. I have pride, okay? <laughs> There's a limit. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm croc. Get the f- out of here. Get the f- out of here. <laughs> Some people like to wear Crocs. They feel that this style is comfortable. Hey, do what you, you want to do. But look, you said that you like comfortability put, over put fashion. That on me. I don't Doesn't know, man. Your feet might be. Your feet might feel good in them. Never, never knock them until you try them. I don't own a pair of Crocs. You know when I feel. You know when I feel uncomfortable. What? When I look <laughs> stupid. That's when I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. This one's from uh, B N fan underscore thunder and he wants to know has renee tried to limit what you do with hardcore wrestling or do you just accept the grief when you go home 
No, I don't get any. I don't get any grief from her. I'm a professional. This is what I do. I've done it my entire existence. This is this is who she married. She knows I'm not stupid. I am not attempting to go out there and get hurt. Uh, the goal is to come home in one piece every single time. Like she's been there through it all, you know, and the worst injuries and so forth. It always had nothing to do with uh, some crazy spot or something. It's always like just some random stupid thing. It's a physical sport. It's a contact sport, man. You know, and she, she knows that, you know, she works in sports. She was an athlete, you know, it's just, she knows this. She knows wrestling now. She's come to learn it and understand it. She's been a big part of this business, you know, and it, I get, I get no grief from her truly. Yeah, she gets it. Okay, so this one is from Candace, and she goes, any advice for doing something out of your comfort zone, i.e. applying to the military, because that's what I want to do? If that's what you want to do, then I I, I salute you, and I say, definitely do it. If it's out of your comfort that's out of anybody's comfort zone. That That's the hardest job that you can have. That's the most, uh, that's going and doing it, man, for everybody. So like, that's a lot. Uh, I, I can't imagine that would be comfortable, but you know, great things are not achieved in comfort, you know? So like if some, if something that, uh, kind of crazy and, uh, not crazy, but something that, uh, kind of ambitious is what you want. And that's what makes you kind of get excited and get your, your blood pumping and that's what you want then hunt just do it just do it man because you'll just do it and ask questions later you'll figure it out you know wing it call in the ring go out there and just do it like call the audible you'll be all right if that's where your if that's where your uh instincts are pulling you just go man go and if you do then my my utmost sincere gratitude as a, as a citizen of this country. Very cool. Or maybe you're from a different country. Either way, I, I, I salute you. Very cool. This one comes from, and I'm probably going to botch your name, so my apologies, uh, Joe Bon Con Bocic. My apologies. Um, the origins of the Titty Master nickname. Ah. Yes. This is in the book, isn't it? No, no, actually, it's not. But I, so I'm going to give it here for oral sessions on the volume. Oral sessions on the volume. The story of the titty master. Here's what happened. Here's, here's the thing. And here's the thing you have to understand. Is that one does not simply wake up in the morning and put on the titty master. One does not come home at night and take it off. This is, this is a life. This is a living breathe. This is not something that can be put on and taken off. This is, this is a life you live when you are bequeathed with the energy of the titty master. So, I mean, it all started, I wake up in a cold sweat, cold sweat, beads and rivulets coming down my face. And I had a nightmare. And it was kind of like, uh, kind of like the opening scene of Baywatch mixed with Mortal Kombat from the nineties, you know? And I was given a message, you know, through the ether that I had to, I knew where I needed to go. Somehow I knew the, the, the universe put me on this path and I set on a journey to Mount Titicaca. And I climbed to the top of this mountain lightning crashing wind it's like a hurricane on top of a mountain i can't see anything there's dust in my face hot ash flying and i see the titty elders at the top of, of of the top of the mountain standing around a tree and they all raise their hands to the air and then lightning strikes and it hits this big oak tree <laughs> i think it was an oak may have been a, a ficus but not like one of the little ficuses that are in like an office. This is like one of the, well, like a super ficus. Right. Whatever yeah. kind of tree it was, it doesn't matter. And then out of this, 
this lightning strike. I see red glowing, this two pieces of wood. And I'm, I'm called to them. I feel a pull. And the elders look at me and I look at them and I look at the, I look at the wood and I see it come into view and I see, I see it here and it's this pair of nunchucks <laughs> inscribed into the wood with the lightning, a T and inscribed into the wood, the burning fire of the lightning an M. And the elders, they put their hoods up and they walk away and they leave me alone on top of the mountain with, with these. And I realized at that moment that I, I am the titty master. Do you understand? I'm following. There can be only one. Exactly. Yeah. And this is, this is where the power lies. Okay. I like it. I like it. I can't do this sitting down, but you know. So how sick are your Chuck skills? If I, oh, if I was standing up, I'd be, you know, you'd kill it. You'd be yeah. dangerous. Okay. What other weapons do you have? Because that that was a, a big question too on the Ass Mosks hashtag. Like, how many weapons does John Moxley own? Are are you into ninja swords? Because I knew you were we were doing this today, so I wanted to bring out one that my grandfather bequeathed to me when he passed away. Oh, that's that's not bad. Yeah. You know, I feel so like I, a lot of a lot of people do the swords, you know. So yeah. like I, I don't really go that direction. I got a whole arsenal of nunchucks. I got steel, wood, balsa wood. You know, obviously the sacred ancient ones. These aren't to be played with. These are not toy. Yeah. Okay, this is a whole different thing. But uh, I got some that are like probably six pounds on each side that you could just absolutely crack somebody's face open with. I got a blow gun that I've been shooting out in the backyard, uh, just waiting for a rat to try to invade or a rattlesnake or something like that. Uh, I got a lot of throwing knives. I got size. My favorite. Oh, I got spear. You know, my favorite uh, gimmick, though, is a thing called the Shambok, which is spelled S-J-A-M-B-O-K. It's a South African snake whip. Right? I think I discussed this with Josh Barnett in the very first episode of this very show, so I won't go too deep yeah. into it. But basically, it's a little piece of metal with, like, rubber around it. It looks like a giant doesn't look intimidating at all but you whip it and the, the velocity it creates it you can f- some f- up with that thing the one time I, the first time i tried it i hit a freaking watermelon with it and it just like it cut through that thing like a laser beam it was freaking nuts like you, you could cut somebody's head off with that thing and it's not sharp it's just all about the velocity so i got those stationed all around the house you know, so if we ever got like an intruder or anything, he would get shambocked into oblivion. Boom. There you go. All right. This one comes from uh, Brogan and Brogan wants to know top five whiskeys. Well, the, uh, the old number seven is, is number one, obviously just regular ass Jack Daniels. Uh, I like gentleman Jack too, which is real similar, but like a little bit smoother and sweeter and like, it's hard to even classify them as two different things, but I guess you could make gentlemen a number two. Uh, generally, that I just stick right there in that wheelhouse because I know exactly what I'm getting into. It's not like some of the ones are so strong that like, I'm like no, I got a headache. That wasn't that. It, you know, I like a smooth ride. You know, like, but I like bullet bourbon a lot. This is a little stronger, a different thing. Very occasionally, just if I was, like if I was just to change it up, I get a bullet, you know. I like bullet. Crown, obviously, another you know, go-to. I feel like Crown is the, chemically, the components are the most similar to Jack Daniels. So, like, if, say, I was in Canada or something in the airport and they didn't have Jack, I, would, I immediately go to Crown. Cause I feel like it's the same thing as far as like how strong it is, how it would affect you. Like it's basically chemically the same, very different taste, more of a vanilla vibe with the crown. I like crown, uh, you know, and Canadian club, you know, is not, a. it has something about it that, uh, it's kind of charming, you know, Canadian, Canadian club whiskey. I feel like it's like cheap. It's cheap, right? 
yeah it's cheaper. not that expensive it's not that expensive something about it though is uh there's a there's a charm to it you what know? about the japanese whiskeys not, not you know i really thought i would get into that especially going over japan a bunch but i just none of them ever uh none of them ever did anything for me would you ever would you ever brew your own whiskey because i know josh barnett has his own whiskey would you ever want to dive yeah. into the spirits world we talked about this and other people have asked me that too because now it's real cool to get into like putting your name on something like oh this is my brand of wine or my brand of champagne or my brand of my, my beer or my whiskey or my cigars or what like and i'm like man maybe i should do that and when i thought about it here's the thing if i'm gonna put my name on anything like this book that you can pre-order now on amazon.com called mox uh if i'm gonna put my name on something it's got to be like true to me and exactly and like it would have to be okay this is the whiskey that i drink above all of the whiskeys if i was going to put my name on it but the thing is jack daniels already perfected that like over 100 years ago i can't imagine like i'm i don't even know anything about it. so how would i how would i create something better than that i can't therefore like i could put i could just get any whiskey and put my name on it call it mox whiskey and make a few bucks off of it but it would be a farce it would be bull I'd be lying. I'd be disingenuous because it wouldn't be as good as Jack Daniels, who's perfected it. Well, you wrote a book, so maybe you can distill a whiskey. You never know. You figure it out. Yeah. Maybe. Eh, whatever. All right. So this one uh, is from the Vikes Bull 53. What would you do or how would you suggest if you really liked a girl and you're shy but don't know how to approach her? uh liquid courage i would say would probably be your first uh your first go-to you know i mean if you're talking about like a social setting just get a little liquored up you know that you'd be amazed how less scary things are you know but if it's like a work scenario where that's not a uh, case just uh be yourself and relax and be calm and be cool and don't try too hard girls don't like when you try hard you know make them come to you but you got to put in some effort. You know, you can read all about this in my new bestseller, but, uh, you know, just be yourself, man. You know, don't, uh, don't try to be what you think she would want you to be. Cause then it, then it's not going to work out anyway. Unless you just want to hook up with her one time. Don't fake the funk. All right. So this one's from NWO Hollywood 305. Any advice to someone looking to change careers mid thirties? Just do it. Find uh, whatever, do you, you know, jobs. You know, people always go like, oh, you know, I hate my job, I hate my job. But then they never leave the job or they they feel like they're stuck in where they are and so forth. Dude, I tell people, so, there's so many jobs out there. There's always a job. There's always money to be had. Money goes in circles. It changes hands. You go, you buy a pack of cigarettes money changes hands you go buy a car money changes hands you sell a house you buy a house like there's uh, the, you, you clock in you clock out you cash your check you spend your money money's always come and going there's always ways to get money there's always you know and how much money do you need you need money to eat and put a roof over your head and provide for whoever you have to provide for so i don't know your situation in your mid-30s, maybe you have kids and so forth. So, you know, you are going to have to take into account what kind of financial risks you can take, you know? I mean, if you got kids and bills and so forth like that. But generally, man, you just, you can't, you got to step off the ledge first, you know? And if something, if you're asking this question, probably you're thinking of something else already. Maybe you don't have like a the greatest idea or like the exact idea, but you're thinking maybe I could go do something like this. Or, so just go in that direction. You got to step off the ledge, man. Otherwise you'll never get there. Just go for it. Like let the, let the bills and the money and everything sort itself out. Ultimately, ultimately everything will work out as long as you just kind of follow your, your heart and what you're feeling. And if you hate your job and you're trying to switch careers, it'll work itself out later, man. Don't worry about the little details. As long as, as long as people got food on their plates, roofs over their heads, clothes on their back, you know, 
ultimately you'll get more rewards for following your your passions you know let it all let it all play out man just jump off the ledge is the advice so when renee and the volume sports tweeted out that you were going to be a guest host on oral sessions and we did the hashtag ask mox a lot of people wanted to know if john moxley wasn't a professional wrestler what would john moxley do it's so hard to say i think i answered that question on this last show actually i when i took a like an aptitude test they told me I'd be a forest firefighter, which I never went and did that. But I, it seems like a cool job. Like, I'd be into that. Uh, but I, as you'll find out, you know, if you pre-order my book on Amazon, that I think I actually maybe been a decent writer. You know, I have no writing skills. I never went to school for writing. I don't know anything about anything. But I think I kind of, once I started to pick it up, I kind of had a knack for it because it's storytelling basically is what you're doing. I mean, if it's different, I guess, if you're like a history writer and you're writing a history book, but if you're writing just a, a book just for and giggles, you know, you know, you want to capture people's attention. You want to spin a yarn. You want to tell a story. And that's what we do in the ring. And that's what you do with the promo. That's what you do with an angle. It might go six months or it might go, might take place all in one TV episode, but you know, you come up with ideas and stories and you, tell them and writing is just another form of that i think what gets me excited is storytelling so i think if i if i didn't have the physical capability to wrestle maybe i would have found and i didn't discover this till recently maybe would have found myself geared toward writing or or even like filmmaking or something like that you know because I, I just like telling stories you know it's just having fun just taking people on a ride i like to see people's reactions you know in the ring and, and to it i like to the, when they feel emotionally connected to it you know now what was the most difficult part of writing the book because you understand storytelling and you understand the build and rise and, and and how to you know get it over but what was the most difficult thing because essentially this is it's your life story so like how much do you want to share how open do you get like was there difficulty in opening up about your past your childhood or like whatever no you know, i don't go this- i don't go like okay. I got, I have nothing to hide or anything, you know, the most, I guess as far as like what to put in and whatnot, you know, you don't want to jam. It's like uh kind of like a wrestling match too. Like, or like, a, or like a promo. That's why WWE promos f- suck. Cause they jam 5,000 f- words in there that aren't necessary. Say what you want to say, mean what you want to say, get your point across. I'm going to beat your ass on Saturday night. Cause I don't like you. Boom. Done. Like we don't need to like, we don't need all these. F- what is this? What is this? F- four pages, of f- right? So, and sometimes at a match, it's like, okay, we planned out all these f- spots, but like, really, what is the story? What are we trying to get? You're the good guy. I'm the bad guy. You're big. You're small. You're tall. You're short. Whatever the the contrast of styles or the the story we're telling. What do we have all this? Sometimes you just look at it and go, you know what? We don't need all that extra. F-. Let's just sometimes. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Like so. There's some stuff where I, I had, I probably wasted like a month on a bunch of that I just went like, I don't need this. Like, this is just, I don't even know why I'm putting this in here. Like, I think I was putting it in for like other people. And I went like, it just doesn't fit the, it f***s up the flow and just, I don't know. I can't at all. Wasted a month of work. Because I was just like, it doesn't serve the purpose of the book. Like, because, you know, I almost looked at it like an album. Like you have an opening track and uh you go up and you go down and you have like a ballad and you get, and then you come back up or whatever, you know, and you have a close. So once I started to get a, the kind of get a feel for what I wanted to want it to be, it was real easy to just can stuff. Not cause, but there's, there was nothing I was hiding or leaving if I'm leaving it out. Cause it just doesn't fit. So it's like crafting that like perfectly balanced story was I wouldn't say that was the hardest part and that was your question, but uh, the hardest part is just the focus because it takes an incredible amount of focus to write a book. I I mean, I knew it was going to take a lot of hours. I knew it was going to be a lot of hours, a lot of sitting and typing and writing and thinking. I didn't realize like how mentally and emotionally draining it was going to be. 
like two hours of like really deep writing, you feel like you just ran a marathon. You're like, you're like physically spent, especially like for me to tell some, tell the right story. Like I got to go back to that place. I got to like put myself mentally and emotionally where I was, what was going on? What was I doing? What music was I listening to? What was around me? What were the sights and smells and sounds and, and, that's like really draining to go to these places, especially when they're not really pleasant places you don't want to go. So yeah, it's, it was like a very, I'm glad it's over. It was, it was tough. And like, it's such a uh, draining and demands so much of your focus and attention, but so does a pregnant wife. So that was horrible timing that those two things intersected. Cause I'm like trying to focus on this, but I'm also trying to be worried about her. So I'm like, there, there was just a lot of, I'm glad it's over. Whew. I'm like ready to just like, I'm not even worried about this kid. Cause I'm just, let's just have the kid. That'd be easy. I'll just change diapers. Like just, I'm so glad there's nothing more to write or, you know, so hopefully it's good. Maybe it'll suck. I don't know. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter because I, I, I like it. I think I can confidently say that I like it. So that's like, all that matters that's then. literally that's all I care about. If, some, if one person really likes it, then I'm happy. If a thousand people hate it, f- them. I like it. And there's other available person. for pre-order right now. Yeah, I think you'll like it. I'm in it. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I'll do it. All right. So this comes from X Lucky Lass. Speaking of fatherhood, she wants to know what's the one thing you are looking forward to as a new father. I, I, that, 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 that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. I'm jumping off a ledge, man. I'm, I'm, I'm I just ran and jumped off a cliff. I have no idea what's coming. No, I'm just, I'm just hoping like for maybe a... holding the kid, looking at her eyes, wondering what color eyes is gonna be. Maybe uh, wiping her ass for the first time. Like, what's the, like? What are you looking forward to? Feeding, burping. I mean, I don't know anything about any of it. So, like, I, I, I mean, people have their things that they were cool moments for them. So I'm like, I, I get that all sounds good. It all, it all sounds good to me. I'm like, that all sounds good. Like people go, Oh, this is the greatest moment of your life. This changes my life or this or that. And I'm like, okay, that sounds cool to me, but like, I don't know. I'm okay. So like, I'm waiting for it. So like, I don't know. Everybody's just putting it, everybody's putting this experience over to me. So like, I'm like ready to, okay, let's do it. Like, I just, I don't have a particular one. I guess it'd be interesting to see like, if, uh, if she's more like her or more like me, you know, cause it, I don't, I don't know. You know, there's some, there's some bad DNA in my bloodline. So I'm hoping for mostly hers. Like if I just got a little Renee, I'd be, I'd be cool with that. This one comes from JB Kendall Marie life advice. What is the best coping mechanism while reaching for your dreams? I almost dropped out of high school for pro wrestling, but didn't. I used to get told all the time, I will never amount to anything if I became a wrestler. Prove me right and become one. Proved me right and and became one. Uh, ask Mox, what, what's your what's your advice for people trying to reach their dreams? Just do it, man. Just go, 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 go. F- everybody, middle fingers everywhere. Suck my d- all the way, like go for it. If that's what you really want, if you want to be a pro wrestler, but if you want to be a graphic designer or you want to be a cheerleader, or you want to be a, uh, a manager at a McDonald's, like I don't, whatever you want to do. Like if you want to be a pro wrestler or a musician or an actor, and we live in this like social media world where, I mean, all these questions, where'd you get these questions? The Twitter. hashtag X mock Twitter. Exactly. You got them on social media like we use it for everything i can't even escape it i don't even fuck with it but i got people every day trying to get me to do it and like okay how do we get these questions we got them on social media if i go on like a, any website about any news i go on like an mma website oh what's the new fights coming up and it's like so and so says this and this and the whole thing is just their twitter exchange it's not even any like news and i'm like so i can't escape it it's everywhere it's what, what it is so not i mean that's a separate thing but my point is now, you know, you're on this social media and there's all these people who just immediately want to diminish you or say, oh yeah, good luck with that or whatever. Or like, if you 
said, oh, I think I'm going to go to school to be a artist or I'm going to be a musician or I'm going to be a pro wrestler. You're going to get like a thousand just less sad motherfuckers who are just going to like for like for because it makes them feel better or something to just say something negative to you. And like you can't don't that shit. But when you, when you get it in real life, it's worse, especially when you get it from like your friends, you know, like as soon as you start. And the funny thing is, like, as soon as you start having any success, you know, then then people come out of the woodwork and they start even people you thought were your friends or whatever, the people you barely even know, they try to poke holes in it and no, oh, that's not really going to work, whatever. You're not going to make it or whatever. And then like when you do, then everything changes. Then all these people are your best friend in the world. And like, oh man, brother, I miss you. And then yeah, it's like, oh really? Okay. Well, you. Get the all those people don't just don't listen to anybody. Just do what you want to do the way you want to do it. Do your, th- you know, like if you believe in yourself, man, just that's it. That's all. Them. Like it's it, my, my philosophies are very simple, you know? And you get, you know, you use those people as fuel, you know, you'll read about this in my upcoming bestseller, but like all the, I almost need those people sometimes as f-ed up as that is, even if, even if I don't listen to them or I don't seek them out, I, I'll create them in my mind to like, if I don't have anybody to give a middle finger to, then I feel like I'm, lo- I don't have as much oomph behind what I'm doing. I need somebody to say f- you to, to like really get in get motivated or something, you know, like, like even, I mean, if I go to the, if I go to the gym, I have a better workout. If I'm thinking this person or something, you know, like I I almost need that like motivation. So the, you know, if those people are inescapable, they're telling, you no, use them as fuel. I want to rip through a couple of more because a lot of people want your relationship advice. So this one is from real Dan page. My girlfriend is trying to get me to go vegan and I don't want to give up meat. Do I quit meat or quit her? Well, those two things shouldn't be mutually exclusive. <laughs> live and live and let live, man. Like why, you know, I mean, if she, you, you sh- I mean, if this is a good relationship, whether then you should be able to eat meat if you want. And she should be able to be a vegan if she wants, and you shouldn't f- with each other. If it's what, if it's you, either got to be a vegan with me or not. Go, go f- yourself. Get the f- out of here. You don't need her, you know. But if she wants to be a vegan, let her be a vegan. Cool. Like it shouldn't live and let live. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. Like if, you know. This one comes from Deadly Gambit. I've been dating. I've been out of the dating game for five years now after I was called undateable by someone who I thought was a friend due to my disabilities. My self-esteem has been shot and I do not know how to try to jump back in there. Do you have any suggestions? I just, you know, don't worry about what anybody else ever said in the past. That's the past. The past is in the past because it's the past. So leave it in the past, uh, in the here and now, you know, Look at who you are, what you bring to the table, uh, and be yourself. And you know, when you find the right person, it's it's easy, and they're out there, and you'll find them. And uh, as far as where to look, I don't know. You know, uh, you, sometimes they're right in front of you. Sometimes they just stumble right into your life. You know. I know at least one person who had incredible success on that eHarmony. I think that thing actually works. It's a guy named High IQ Quentin Lee, who was an old HWA wrestler. And he was like, Yeah, I was just so sick of dating. So I went on the C Harmony and I just typed in, I like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. This is exactly who I am. And he just laid it all out. And like three weeks later, he met his wife, who he's still married to today, who's like, they were perfect for each other. Cause he just said, This is who I am. Make no apologies about it. And sure enough, Rolodex comes through. Oh, there's a person exactly like you. So maybe maybe technology like that is good. You know, I saw at least one person who had a lot of success with it. But also, you know, there's the real life is all around you, man. So keep your eyes and ears open. If you stay true to yourself, your true love will find you. What man, that is deep. And I think that's how we end it right here. Mox, is there anything you want to plug besides the book, which is on pre-order right now on Amazon? That That's... Uh... No, that, that's about it. That's all I got okay. going on. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. 
So we appreciate you coming to hang out today that wifey turned over the show to you and the aesthetics of the wallpaper and the periwinkle. This is a nice, yeah, we've built a nice little studio here. You know, I've been in here working, hammering this together. And then I got to come in and do the show too. I'm just doing everything except the tech stuff. You guys do all that because I don't know how to work that at all. All right, man. Listen, is there anything that you want to you want to close out with? Is, do you do you do you have anything concrete and a knowledge dart no, that no. you want to you want to end on a high note? We've had a great time here on Oral Sessions. This has been Oral Sessions with Emilio and John Moxley on the volume. Uh, See you next time.